Hi Year 9 artists, um, today I'm going to talk to you about analysing cubism. So Mrs Perry has already introduced the topic of cubism. You will have an overview in a sense that um, cubist art uh, was a rejection of what we might think of as an inherited concept that art should copy nature for example. It should be only ever purely representational of what we can actually see, uh, actually see with our naked eye. But um, what cubist artists were doing were they were kind of going against that sense that we ought to always use traditional techniques of perspective or modelling or foreshortening. Um, they wanted instead to emphasise the two dimensionality of the canvas. And even then, when they worked in sculptural forms, what they wanted to do was to look at as many different aspects of the same object or indeed person as possible within one essential item. It says there the cubist artists reduced and fractured objects into geometric forms and then realigned these within a shallow relief-like space. Um, they also use multiple or contrasting vantage points and again this is an idea of kind of simultaneity where things are simultaneously represented within a single space. So for us to look at in greater detail, we're going to look at The Weeping Woman by Picasso. It was painted uh, in 1937, so that's a period in terms of Picasso's particular history, painting history, um, where he had already essentially invented cubism with Georges Braque. Um, and this is really kind of nearly 30 years after um, the first Cubist painting started to emerge. Now, most of you will realise that Cubism ha hasn't come just from nothing. It was born out of uh, a kind of collision between uh, artists reacting to the birth of photography, for example, where you know lots of artists, particularly painters, would have realised that working in things, or rather working in ways that are just purely representational, could now become the domain of the camera. And so an element of more kind of interpretive, expressive um, representations could come about. Um, the Weeping Woman uh, is of Dora Maar, and she was um, Picasso's mistress, and also his muse. Uh, he painted her many, many times. He returned to her form as inspiration frequently. Um, so Weeping Woman in itself actually is, uh, I think, maybe 12, 13 versions of this particular image. Um, and actually Dora Maar herself, who was also, by the way, an exceptional artist, and I would love it to think that lots of you would go and look up Dora Maar as an artist in her own right and not just rely on her as the muse of Picasso. Um, she explained when she was interviewed about being the Weeping Woman that it wasn't actually a portrait of her. Instead, it was a metaphor for the tragedy of the Spanish people. And that's because the Weeping Woman is a, a motif from the much larger work of Guernica. Lots of you will have heard us talk about Guernica in the past. It's an extremely important painting, I think, um, in modern art history. Also from 1937, Guernica is a, is a war painting, that's how many people think of it. And indeed it was Picasso's reaction in painted form to the horror of um, what happened in the little town of Guernica. Guernica was bombed. Um, decimating the lives of ordinary people. It's a vast canvas, really, really huge canvas. And in it, I don't know if you can see, but um, just there at the very bottom left, we have an image of the crying woman, the weeping woman holding her dead child. And the weeping woman is taken from that. This was a theme that really, really interested and inspired Picasso. He realised there was something deeply emotive about that image, the sense that in war, the casualties of war are often civilians, people who do not deserve to have anything happen to them at the hands of uh, forces beyond their control. There's a sense of violence 
um, in reaction in this painting. And of all the symbols that we see in Guernica, it could be the fallen soldier, it could be the, the bull, it could be the, the light bulb eye, it could be any of those things. But actually the weeping woman is the one that reaches into the soul of Picasso, speaks to him of something beyond ordinary tragedy, if any tragedy could ever be ordinary. You can see also on the screen now, down at the bottom, there's a smaller image of um, a weeping woman. Um, this is one of the many versions I was talking about that Picasso created. Um, often he was kind of producing a couple a day in response to the weeping woman image. And actually he painted versions of this, he drew, paint, uh, he drew versions of this in oil pastel. Um, and I'll just read what I've put on the screen here. These studies represent a shift from being a participant in the Holocaust of Guernica to a witness of that drama. So the bigger painting of Guernica really is kind of like the start point for him where he was in reaction as, a, as an artist to an event that happened that was awful, dreadful, um, a criminal act of war. Um, but in, in a sense of being a participant, he really was participating in what he saw in Guernica because he was part of the narrative of being Spanish, of um, having political ideals and ideas uh, that were important to him uh, and they all come out in Guernica whereas by the time we get into these reproductions uh, of the weeping woman we are looking at Picasso moving into becoming um, moved by something that wasn't his direct experience. Um, the screaming mother becomes the weeping woman both the link between them and the transformation of feeling from agony to grief is what sustains the power and presence of the weeping woman. The painting is without a vestige of sentimentality because it belongs to and witnesses a tragedy of modern history. That's really potent and powerful stuff, isn't it? And if we look at these images of the weeping woman, you know, can we really see tragedy? Can we see horror? Can we see pain and suffering? Now, to some people, these might seem cartoon-like caricatures. And maybe up to a point, um, cubism does that. And yet it takes very seriously um, the sense of the wholeness of something. Um, your task for us is to write an analysis of the painting, The Weeping Woman including research facts and your own interpretations and ideas based on the historical, social and emotional context of the image. Um, I would like you in the first instance to produce this work as a PowerPoint, um, including images, just as I have done in the slides leading up to this one. Um, the text that you're going to write is going to be on those slides and presented beautifully, as if it's a double page in your book, for example, but given to us as a PowerPoint so we can check it at the moment when we're working digitally. You don't have to write more than 250 words. And for those of you listening to me say 250 words and thinking, my goodness, that's a lot of writing. No, it's not. There's an awful lot you could say about the weeping woman. So this work is going to be due to us on your Year 9 Art Teams page by Wednesday the 20th of January. And obviously we would expect at the very least to have an image of the Weeping Women, this particular version, please. Um, and of course, when you're using technical language and you're looking at the visual elements, we do want you to talk about colour. We do want you to talk about composition. It might be right to mention the colours uh, Picasso has used, for example, right in that centre point where her mouth kind of converges with her hand. It would be perhaps relevant for you to think about the size of the head within the space of the frame of the overall image. And also, maybe you would want to consider where is the weeping woman meant to be? If we know that she comes from the original painting of Guernica, which was really about the horrors of war and the bombing of Guernica, the town, and then we see her appearing in what seems to be uh, an, in, an interior space. You know, what could that suggest to us? 
Facts are facts. You can go and look them up. You can read the Wikipedia page about Guernica. You can read the Wikipedia page about the Weeping Woman. You can find all kinds of really interesting articles. But more than that, when we're analysing work, we want to hear, read, see that you also have an immediate response to something that you're able to convey, uh, convey to us through written language. And so information can only take you so far. Part of this 250 word document has got to be your own personal response. That response, of course, can be based on purely visual things. But it can also be the response to what I've told you about where this painting comes from in terms of its inception, its concept. You could talk, of course, about other paintings alongside it. So you might talk about the many versions of The Weeping Woman and of course for many of you you will realise the relevance of writing about Guernica. If you do want further reading, a uh, recommendation for me is to look at the Smithsonian um, article on Cubism. It's really really informative, lots of excellent uh, language and, and bite-sized pieces of information to help you and of course the usual um, ports of call online for you to try and get some research together about this particular image. Anyway, I'm really looking forward to reading what you write and also, of course, seeing the images you select in order to fully research and analyse the Weeping Women. And a recap then, you are going to write up to 250 words on the Weeping Women by Pablo Picasso, the version that I showed you earlier, painted in 1937. I want you to treat this as if it would be a double page research um, in your book. So presentation is very important to us and don't forget at a later date we will of course be doing things like printing out any PowerPoints you send to us so you can stick these things into your book. And that just remains for me to say um, good luck United Artists um, and I look forward to seeing what you produce. <laughs>